And now for part four of my interview with Executive Director of UNICEF, Ann Veneman. So recently you returned from a trip from the Democratic Republic of Congo, and hundreds of children there have been abducted by a rebel group infamous for its tactics in terms of kidnapping children, forcing them to either hard labor or become a sex slave. Tell me about some of those personal stories. Well, I went to a, a little area called Dungu in the northeastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo. This is an area where the Lord's Resistance Army, a rebel group that's been for many years operating in northern Uganda. I had the opportunity a few years ago to visit northern Uganda when children were being abducted there. They were being forced to fight. They were being forced to be sex slaves if they were girls. Um, they were being kept in captivity. As some got rescued or were released, UNICEF was helping with the rehabilitation. The stories I heard were horrendous in terms of what these children have been through, and they're the ones who survived. They saw many of their friends die along the road, get killed. I mean, it, it was just horrible. And the, the communities, they saw their children get kidnapped. The, this was the area where children were, our children were sent by their parents as night commuters, they'd go sleep somewhere every single night for protection and come back in the morning and be back in their villages and go to school and so forth. So now the Lord's Resistance Army is operating in the Democratic Republic of Congo. It's not getting much attention like it did when it was in northern Uganda. And yet children are being abducted and there are many organizations, including UNICEF, that are helping to rescue these children, rehabilitate them. I had the chance to meet with some of them. One little boy who could barely walk had had an injury to his foot, got infected. He couldn't keep up with the people that were marching these kids across the countryside. And so they decided to beat him and torture him and leave him for dead. He, he survived for five days and someone found him. And so, and so he now got in medical care but still had difficulty walking. I said, what would you most like to have? He said, I'd like a bicycle because I can ride a bicycle even though I can't walk very well because I want to go to school. This kid still wanted to have a normal life even have, after having been through this. Also in the Democratic Republic of Congo, in the eastern part, this is where some of the worst sexual violence is taking place anywhere in the world, where women are not just raped, they're raped by multiple men, often have many foreign objects um, which injure them. But there are some amazing examples of two hospitals I visited, Heal Africa in Goma and Ponzi Hospital in Bukavu, who were helping to repair these women both physically and emotionally, to give them a chance to have a better life. UNICEF is supporting both of these hospitals, trying to help these women and girls in many cases. Many of these victims are very young. Why do you think we're not hearing more about this in the U.S.? Why do you think that these stories, these very powerful stories that you're telling, are not on the front pages day after day of the New York Times or the Washington Post? Well, it's not that some of us aren't trying. And UNICEF is working very closely with an organization called V-Day um, to build a facility in the Eastern DRC to help these women. We're also both working with Ponzi Hospital together. And we're telling the stories, and yet they don't get on, in the, on the front page of the New York Times every day. But they're very important stories. The world is paying more attention. As you know, Hillary Clinton just went to the Eastern DRC and when she went, it was on the front page of a lot of newspapers and I think helped to raise awareness about the seriousness of the issues that women are facing in the Eastern but DRC. But were you frustrated in the sense with the media coverage of Secretary Clinton's uh, tour over in Africa? Because it seemed that the press was much more interested in the comments she made about her husband rather than the substance of her trip itself. Well, that did get a lot of play and I must say the trip she took was so important because what's happening in the DRC is so critical that the world know. Um, 
I think in the Democratic Republic of Congo, people are seeing that this issue is getting international attention, and that more, uh, and that it's getting the kind of attention that is telling the country they must take action to change what is happening there. I mean, there is not enough law enforcement. There's not enough. Uh, they aren't paying their army. And so oftentimes some of these crimes take place by the army themselves, not just the rebel groups. And so it's critical that the world pays attention to these atrocities that are happening against particularly women and girls, but even boys and men. <laughs>